Welcome everyone to week four of the Raven Hall Cup. Look at what I'm wearing. Yep, the old Osbol tops. I got these together for all the players that went to the Australian Championships way back when. Uh, beautiful with like sponsorship on it and name on the back, Big 73 is Frog Bear. That's right. Oh, it kind of faded in and out there. So maybe I will show you the other one that I got. So. 73 and frog bear very good all right but on to week four shall we had a pretty good week going on now we'll just do it straight off the bat and how we see it so the diggers versus the green phlegm hackers so diggers versus hackers casualties three aside now there were no lasting injuries on the diggers but two miss next game and niggling injuries on the hackers unfortunately but one of the bloaters regenerated and was back in the game that same troll slayer got all the casualties and is looking on par for his second chosen skill so we're going to put the moz on that team and what i mean by that is we're going to give that player a name and that player's name is bob so bob is the one that everyone needs to look at and needs to keep an eye on because Bob is now a target. So much so that the commissioner here is going to give an extra 40,000 gold piece winnings to the team that can take out Bob from the diggers. Digger Bob, your time is ticking <laughs> all right so the diggers took out that game at home 2-0 to the hackers then we move on to the devils hosting the vandals now the devils did go down at home to the vandals they suffered five casualties including one death four of those casualties were in the first half so how they even kept the vandals to one td is beyond me but they were able to do it. There was only one casualty on the Vandals, but wow, four in the first half against the Devils. You know, I think the Devils did really well to keep the Vandals at only one score, yeah? All right, the Bombers are still missing from week two, I think it is, or week three. So we've given up looking for them. Eventually they'll show themselves. Last seen in the Chaos Waste. No idea if they're still around. So the Puff Peak pacifists all showed up with their fans and they walked away with any and all winnings from that event. All right, we move on to the Flamers versus the West End Warriors. Now the Flamers at home did beat the Warriors 2-0. Warriors having to use their apothecary in the first turn after a blocker was sent to the casualty bin didn't make much difference as this game was a battle from both sides. With the KO and the casualty bins filling up fast, the Orcs armor proved to be a little bit too strong for the Warriors. By the end, the Warriors suffered a missing next game injury, which is a lot better than what we thought they would. One of the Orcs picked up a second niggling injury, so his time on that team is probably numbered. Mm -hmm. All right. Doombolt's a new team coming in against the Chef's Knuckle Sandwich. Last week, the Chef Knuckle Sandwich had a surprise game, but it wasn't to be this week. With Doombolt at home looking to prove a point and looking to put their mark on the league, they went off with a 4 0 victory. Now, the Elves dealt four casualties and had a completion, but suffered another missing next game niggling injury casualty and had two deaths on their side. So the Chef's Knuckle Sandwich really dishing out um, some pain to the Doombolts, but the Doombolts were able to take it home with a 4-0 win. Now, the one of those deaths was a Blitzer who was close to skilling up too. So a sad day for the Doombolts in that one. One of the Journey Elves got the MVP, however, so one of those Journeymen was actually then hired onto the team. Gregor Payne is his name. Look out for him, chosen from the crowd, came into play 
was magnificent on the game, so much so got that MVP, so look out for that one, Gregor Payne. All right. The Doombolts did learn their lesson from all these games, however, and have finally picked up an Apothecary. So, good to see what happens next week with them. And that finally leaves us with the game of the Hillside Dragons versus the Fat Crackers. Okay, so Dragons at home to the Fat Crackers took it out 3 0. Let's take a look at what the game of the round had for us. While the result was one sided, this was a brutal game of Smash Mouth Blood Bowl for both teams. The Fat Crackers suffered an early casualty and a couple of KOs that snowballed from bad to worse. KO'd Ogre players were stubborn and by the beginning of the second half the Ogre team only had 5 players on the field. By only by turn 12 only 2 Ogres and a Snotling were left on the pitch. Despite their bench woes the Ogres still managed to inflict 3 casualties even killing the Saurus Visceron the Dread. End result 3 nil to the Dragons with 5 casualties to 3 casualties including 1 dead. One Saurus dead and one Ogre plus one Snotling missing next game. So that's week four for us. What I'll do is I'll get the league letter onto the screen here and we'll see that some teams have played five games. Here we go. Transition, thank you very much. So we see here that the Diggers are still on top. No one has scored against them. They do face the Doombolts next week, who just came off a 4 nil win. So if anyone's going to do it against the Diggers, it's going to be the Doombolts. Now, there is rumour that the Diggers are coming on uh, with a secret weapon. Death Roller, maybe? Most likely. So that's going to be a very interesting match. Going to be interesting to see when they bring it on. Because with the possibility of a score from the Doom Bolts early on, we hope that they've got enough refs in their pockets to keep that Death Roller on the pitch. We'll see. We've followed up by the Hillside Dragons. Having played five games, only one TD against them. Strong on eight TDs for them. We've got the Puff Peak Pacifist right behind the Dragons with one game down to the, to the Dragons. So we'll see what happens there. Uh... Quickly followed by the Flamers, who are on two wins. Followed by the Doombolts, who are looking to prove themselves. And the Vandals, also on two wins. And the West End Cast Warriors. So there is going to be a big fight-off for that 4th, 5th and 6th place. Following them, we've got the Fat Crackers, Chef Nuffle Sandwich. And the Safari Coast Bombers. They're still up there, even with their games of one win, four losses. Taking down... Fight for the Wooden Spoon, we have the Green Flame Hackers and the Daredevils fighting off for that last place. That's going to be a tough spot to fight for as well. So, going into week five, let's take a look at the games. We're going to see one or two results. Alright, so, one of the results already is given against the Bombers. Vandals take home a win, okay? We've got Chef Knuckle Sandwich versus the Daredevils. This is going to be a good game. The Devils are desperate for a win. Chef Knuckle Sandwich just had a pretty good game against the Doombolts, although they are coming off a loss. Both these teams have something to prove. For me, honestly, as much as I love a good sandwich, I think the Daredevils are going to take this one out. I'm predicting a 1-0 win. An upset at home to the Chef Knuckle Sandwich. We'll take a look at that when the week comes. We've got the Hackers versus the Flamers. Now the Hackers right at the bottom with the Flamers. Look, the Flamers are definite uh, favourites here. I would really like to see the Hackers uh, take this one. However, I'm giving 3-1 to one odds on the Flamers for taking this one out. We see the West End Warriors. Went down to the Dragons 1-0. That will be reported on next week. Now the Dickers, Diggers versus the Doombolts. Oh, that is going to be a very good game. Now, where are the Fat Crackers coming in at? The Fat Crackers are also coming in at 8th. Oh, my game of the week is going to have to be in week 5. This Diggers versus Doombolts. 
Now, the Doom Bolts are suffering from a host of injuries, which the Diggers really are not. The Doom Bolts have been impressive in the two games that we've seen them, and they've proven that even taking players from the crowd as journeymen, that they've proven their worth and are able to pick up some really good talents. This is going to be an excellent game. It's probably going to be my game of the round. I am going to give it to the Diggers. Two to one odds though. Only two to one. I'm not as confident on that anymore. And finally we have the Fat Crackers taking on the Puff Peak Pacifists. Fat Crackers being at home looking for another win. The Pacifists have a fair bit of experience with their wins. I don't really see them dropping the, this game, but I really want to see the Fat Crackers taking this one out. So much so that I'm going to give them one and a half to one odds in regards to taking that out. How's that? All right. So that leaves us for week five. Leaves us with the ladder. I'll come back to this. Thank you everyone that um, has joined in. If you're loving these type of sessions, you love Blood Bowl and you love the support that we're giving to the game, think about supporting Midian Gaming. It's what um, is able to hold the Ravenhall Cup and in future, future leagues. Right now, Spike Magazine has come out. If you're into Blood Bowl, you're gonna wanna get copies of this. I was taking a quick squeeze through it with various star plays, reintroducing William Cheney, Wilhelm Cheney, and introducing Frank and Stein back into the league. I might have to do another video just on this magazine alone. And they've also got in there a sword wielding or chainsaw wielding. I think it's actually a magical sword wielding skeleton. So all white. Not sure. Have to read. All right. Thank you everyone that's joined in. Have a great day and we'll see you on the next video. See you all.